and so we celebrate it for eight days. And today is the final day, which we know as the leave taking of the feast. The Feast of the Transfiguration commemorates the day when Jesus went up Mount Tabor in Galilee with St. Peter, James, and John and was transfigured before them. The person of Jesus did not change, but his appearance did. His divine nature shone through his humanity, and the apostles were given a glimpse of his eternal splendor. And when they came down from the mountain, they encountered the multitude, including the father of the possessed boy we read about in today's Gospel. The father says that his son is a lunatic or epileptic. It is very clear in the Gospel that the boy's illness was caused by demonic possession as Jesus rebuked the demon, and later the disciples asked Jesus why they were not able to cast out the demon. The thing that strikes me about this Gospel passage is how Jesus deals with unbelief. Firstly, there is the father of the boy. He blames the disciples for not being able to cast out the demon. And several of the church fathers say that this man was also lacking in faith. In fact, in St. Mark's Gospel, um, his St. Mark's account of this event, the man says to Jesus, If thou canst do anything, help us. But the man, happily kneeling down before Jesus, cries out, Help thou my unbelief. Then there are the disciples who are unable to cure the boy because of their lack of faith. But we know that Jesus does not tell them off in front of the crowd, but in private. And this is a good lesson for everyday life. When you have to correct someone, your husband, your wife, your best friend, somebody at work, do it in private. The objective is not to embarrass or humiliate, but to correct. In the Gospel, we hear of a group of Jesus' disciples who are unable to cure the boy because of their unbelief. But the Church Fathers tell us that Peter, James and John, who only had just uh, some hours earlier witnessed the Transfiguration, they are not included. After what they saw on that table, Peter, James and John had no doubt that Jesus was the Son of God. And St. Paul calls these three disciples the pillars of faith. And then we have the Jewish people represented by the great crowd. Jesus calls them a faithless and perverse generation. Unlike the father of the boy and the disciples who recognized that their faith was weak, but they wanted to improve, there is not even the slightest hint that this faithless and perverse generation has any desire to change. Towards the end of the Gospel passage, when talking to the disciples privately, Jesus tells them they need faith to cast out demons, but also prayer and fasting. Jesus has told the disciples they need faith combined with prayer and fasting. In spiritual warfare against the devil, there is no chance of victory without all three weapons, faith, prayer and fasting. Beginning with the Didache, which is one of the earliest Christian books outside of the Bible, the Church teaches that both the person in need of healing and the person being healed must believe, pray and fast. A common self-deception amongst Christians and even Orthodox Christians today is that prayer is essential but fasting is optional. Fasting is not optional, it is an important part of our tradition. It is not easy, as we know, but the Seventh Church helps us by giving us some rules to organise how we fast. So we're currently fasting, uh, as well as praying, so we're singing the Paracasis to the Mother of God to prepare for the great feast of the Dormition. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, after the liturgy today, we will sing the Paracasis for the last time. Many people could us call the Feast of the Dawn Mission the Pascha of the Summer. And it's important that fasting is included in our preparation for the feast. We fast from the 1st of August up until the 14th tomorrow. 
But today is a Sunday, and so the fast is relaxed until the church allows us wine and oil. This is an example of the church helping us to organize our fasting by telling us to fast on these days, and then relaxing the fast today because it is a Sunday. This is how the church organizes the fast for us. We don't need to think about it, we just look at the calendar and it tells us today is a fasting day, today is not. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus speaks about the importance of faith and that faith must be built up by prayer and fasting. And both of these are signs of the transformation which is the goal of the Christian life. We wish to be transformed and see the light which Jesus shone on Mount Tabor. Through the prayers of our fathers, Lord Jesus 